Grace and peace, everybody. Grace and peace. All righty. <clears throat> Grace and peace. We know we're running a little, 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 little late, but that's okay because we're grateful for what we are uh, going to have tonight uh, in Bible session. Uh, traffic was crazy. And we grateful. You don't want your mic? Mm -mm, I'm fine. I think um, they'll be able to hear me. Try to see for sure. All right. <clears throat> Grace and peace, everybody. We're grateful um, that we're here once again uh, in our Bible session. And we want to say thank you for all of you that's tuning in with us and, and sharing with us. And um, that's even is in the room with us. On tonight, we thank God for each and every one of you that's with us on tonight. And we're going to make sure that all is well uh, in the word of God, because in the word of God is where we find, we find a hiding place. <clears throat> and we're grateful for what God is doing. Uh, we've been talking about for a moment, maximizing our moment. <clears throat> and I remember when God spoke it to me, concerning maximizing. I was looking at my notes. I was looking at my notes uh, today and I said, you know, God, you, you we, we, you are amazing. Yes, yes. Uh, yes. Because I was like, man, okay, get my notes, notes. You see, this is what happens when you get these when you get stuff and you don't write stuff down, mm -hmm. you know what that's the Lord's telling us? We need to go back to pen and paper. Right. <laughs> we need to go back to pen and paper. Because, uh, yeah, I'm trying to tell you something. We, here we go. I'm telling you, these notes, these pads sometimes get frozen on you and stuck yes. on you. And you be you be going up and flapping up and making people, people think that you're crazy. I'm not crazy, you all. It's right here. <laughs> but it's taking forever to download. Okay. It's taking to, forever to download. All right, so here we go. Here we go. And we are grateful for <clears throat> what God is doing with us. Amen. Amen. All right. So we're grateful. We're grateful. And that's why I don't like Androids, Benita. <laughs> I don't like Androids. I like my Apple phone. But see, it's so cute. Yeah. It's a little, you see this little tablet? It's such a cute little tablet. So you can just carry it with you. But see... I, I'm, I'm going to go back to what's 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 best for paper, paper. Amen. paper okay. and you know my iPad. <laughs> That's what I'm going to do. I'm going to go back to my iPad. Mm -hmm. What's best for me? One that used to have an Android. Hey, right, I did have an Android at <laughs> one time, but when you graduate, uh, maximize your moments. You have to maximize your moment. When you maximize your moments, things change. And that's one of the things I want to talk about tonight is when you maximize your moment, that things do change. And right. things doesn't stay the same, mm -hmm. right? It doesn't stay the same, but you have to maximize. And the importance of maximizing your moment is because graduation is for everybody. Mm -hmm. um, I text myself something uh, the other day is stop tripping off of stuff that's in your past. Yes. And a lot of times what we do is mm -hmm. we trip off of stuff that happened yesterday. There's nothing you can do about it. Right. Okay. That happened this morning. There's nothing you can do about it. Mm -hmm. Now, even though it happened this morning, some things can be dealt with. And it can cause some things to change so it won't happen again. But if it happened this morning, I, my granddad just said something always. If it happened, fix it when it happened. Don't, don't try to let it linger on. But we know what the Bible says, right? What the Bible says. Don't let the sun go down, right? And so a lot of times we have to just let the, and then the scripture teaches us to be um, um, soft answers. Just use soft answers, right? Yeah, right, right. right. 
So that's right. So we want to use, the, we, we sometimes it's good just to thank and breathe and say, okay, let me, let me configure it. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Let's count to 10 or to 20. Up. Or, or yeah, <laughs> let's, let's configure it. It's because why we want to make sure that we heard that right. 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 Or that let me adjust my thinking because maybe I promoted this thought in this person. Mm -hmm. It's like, okay. So uh, with me, I'm, I'm driving. And so I'm always getting somebody that get in the car <laughs> that wants to do what? What do they want to do? Tell they off. want talk. Huh? Tell talk. Yeah, that too. But I, I don't have the problem with the talking factor, mother. Mm -hmm. I don't have the problem. They want to change their direction or the destination. Oh, and, wow. and no, no. Because once you change it in the system, it's gonna it's gonna update, right? right. But. I don't want the update mm -hmm. because <laughs> I, I, I just want you to, I, I, I pick the ride because I have a right to cancel. I have a right to pick or ignore. Mm -hmm. So if I pick the ride and I got a sign, I need to put it in this car, but I had a sign that said, if I pick this ride to pick you up, it's a privilege. Don't mess up your privilege. <laughs> okay. Don't slam my door. Right. Do not get in my car with that vocal conversations. And so, because some people feel like they can just get in the car and just start talking about all kind of crazy stuff. Yeah. And I'm like, I don't want to hear that. I don't, I don't want to hear about your sexual episodes and shenanigans that happened last night. You know, uh, I don't want to smell it. So therefore, yeah. people get yeah, people get in and they feel like for their little four, five, six dollars, seven dollars, ten dollars, eighteen dollars, or whatever many dollars they're gonna pay, that they have a right to say whatever they want in your car. <laughs> so you have to maximize your uh, uh, maximize the ability to operate and function in an authority mm -hmm. and max it out. Max that authority out. Yeah, as far as you possibly can. No, hold up. You can't do that in here. So, you know, like this brother, he was just, he was smoking a cigarette. When I drove up, he was smoking a cigarette. And he said, just give me a minute. I said, all right. When he touched the door, when he looked at his phone, it said, your ride has been canceled. Mm. First of all, you're not going to be smoking a cigarette when I drive up. And you're smoking it, and you're going to get in my car? Mm -hmm. No, that's not what's going to happen. We're not going to do that. And so the cause was, the reason was, they said, what was the reason of the, what's it called? Cancellation. The cancellation. So I said, the customer was very disrespectful. Mm -hmm. So you may say, well, that wasn't being disrespectful because mm -hmm. he was smoking a cigarette. It is disrespectful when you get in my car that you don't know anything about me. Mm -hmm. I don't know anything about you and you feel like you can get in this car and smoke your cigarette. That doesn't work. That doesn't work. Just like I don't like people that smoke marijuana. You know, that marijuana scent, I don't like it. So when people get to my car and they smell it, all four windows come down and I lock them. And they're like, bro, no, I'm sorry, you should have thought about that before you got in my car. Because number one, we're not kin. I don't know you. I'm not your homeboy. I'm not your, we're not friends. Mm -hmm. We're not buddies. Mm -hmm. So automatically you should have said this, I don't know who I'm getting in the car with. Mm -hmm. And then again, let me not make this man or this woman car smell this way so that the next rider will get in. Think that there you go. They don't care. They don't care about and so what happens is we find ourselves, y'all, arguing with, with, with customer service saying, oh, someone got in your car and it says smell like cigarettes. Oh, someone got in your car and it smells like marijuana. Yes. Mm -hmm. These passages that you want us to pick up, they're mm -hmm. smelling more than marijuana, more than cigarettes. They smell other things too, but we got to deal with it. Mm -hmm. Right? So... <clears throat> So we, you have to maximize your your potential and your authority, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. uh, but tonight, I want to talk to you about the process. Okay. I want to talk to you about the process. And um, the process is a lot of times we miss the mark. Mm -hmm. We miss the mark. We miss the mark on how or what we think we should be able to operate in, uh, in process. Mm -hmm. The, word, the ability to process is simply, okay, when mother cooking cakes. I ain't never seen that shirt in a while, mother. Hmm. I ain't seen that shirt in a while. And I, 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 saw, that put it on I, I saw mine, but I haven't seen anybody else with this. With their JBM ministry mm -hmm. shirt. Uh -oh. um, 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 when mother's baking her cakes, when she's baking her cakes, there is a process mm -hmm. when you're doing your doing the briskets for me. What is that briskets we do? Mm -hmm. That that is a process. Mm -hmm. uh, Bonita's son does amazing, and I I need to learn that French fries. That oldest boy. Oh, Fred. Fred, Fred them. Fred, I, Fred cooked some French fries one time. I said, "What?" I told Sanjay. I said, "Ronnie, them. Where these fries come from?" 
So it's it's a process yes. that he does with his fries. He don't just go get the French fries out and just put them in some grease on the oven and put. He does something. What's what's some of his process? I, all I know is by the time I get the heat, he done coated it with something. Yeah, it's it's coated. Mm -hmm. It's it's coated. I don't know if you're using buttermilk and flour or um, whatever, mm -hmm. but it got seasoned. And when you taste it, be like, man, because you know French fries are already crunchy as it is yeah. when you fry it, but you've got this extra crisp crunch. So when when Phyllis is doing not 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 your not your um brisket spaghetti salad, yeah, okay, let's let's use your your, your spaghetti, your cold pasta mm -hmm. and stuff. You yeah. got your spaghetti, you got your olives, you got your carrots, and carrots, and carrots you got, got you get, it's, it's, it's a process. Mm -hmm. Right? When mother, when you're doing your chicken salad, that everybody, mother, bring the yes. chicken salad. Right? <laughs> you, you gotta first ball that chicken, right? Ball it, but you don't just ball it. You gotta add I season the water. Yeah, you season the water, right? And then you put the chicken, you clean the chicken out, and, oh, definitely got and, and then you put the chicken in there, and then you have to let it go through its process so it can be prepared for deboning. Yes, right? Cool. So, so the, the, the same thing is when my granddad used to do his pigs all the time, when he was doing stuff that was tended to things, he would ball that chicken mm -hmm. and put carrots and celery and stuff like that in there. It was always a process. Mm -hmm. Anything you do in life, you got to maintain and, wor and work the process. Right. Come That's on, good. somebody need to help me say that. You got to work the process. You got, you got to, to work, work the process. My God, thank you, sir. I look, I see Sister Vita Jones. Uh, on that, uh, Pastor Melanie Hawkins is on it. Lady Lanisha is on. Look, y'all like and share the video because God wants us to maximize our process, right. maximize it, and, and what? Make it large mm -hmm. and ma make make the process that I'm in so large that and, and the purpose of the process, right? So I, that's this what I want to talk to y'all tonight: process and purpose, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Somebody say that with me: process, process. And, purpose. and purpose. You cannot. You cannot. Can y'all hear me really good? Can, let me know y'all if y'all can hear me. Really good. You know, maybe if I do it this way, I'll be able to hear my own self, right? Okay. Yes, they can hear me. They can hear me. Yeah, they can hear me. So the process, right? Mm -hmm. The process, you 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 got to make sure that we endure the process and the purpose. Mm -hmm. The process is what I have to go through. And 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 um how to detach and detangle and dismember certain things uh out of our lives mm -hmm. and stuff, but the purpose is not the same as the process. Right. Right? right. Your, the purpose is what the is the what you say? The the outcome, mm -hmm. right? But the process is the before come. <laughs> 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 the uh the entry level, yeah. right? The the uh entry exam. Uh, come on, Bonita, help me with another word. Come on, mother, help me with another word. The outcome is for the purpose, but our process would be uh, the in, sometimes the ingredients right. and the and and the and stuff that makes that, a difference too. That, that, that makes a difference. You gonna get cheap ingredients? You gonna get a cheap product? They, thank you, mother. If like, mother, if you get cheap ingredients, mm -hmm. you will get a cheap outcome. Right? So uh, my grandma used to do that braid. She'd do her braid. And she'd y'all better not run in this house. Because if y'all make my braid, my, what do you want to say? Yeah, y'all make my bread fall, there's going to be some so-and-so. That's right. And so she would get there and that bread, that separate. I brought her some flour back one time. She looked at that. She said, that say, what that say right there? I said, that saves regular flour, grandma. She said, no, boy. You, she said, go back. And get me some self rising flour. I said, "Well, the lady said she ran down and she said, uh, she said your grandma, she said Mom Ruby is gonna put a uh, baking soda in it, mm -hmm. and so it's gonna rise anyway mm -hmm. if she know what she's doing." My grandma said, "Come on, <laughs> honey, we got in the car and we went down there to to call me a grocery store." And my grandma would say, "Who told you?" I said, "She told me that." My grandma would say, "Let me tell you something. <laughs> the next time I send this boy down here for self rising flour." You don't change my flour <laughs> and tell him if I use corn, uh, 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 bacon corn soda. baking soda, it's going to rise if I know what I'm doing. Honey, I've been cooking bread longer than you've been living. <laughs> and she said, I sent him here for self-rising flour. Okay. It's a difference. And my, we yes. went over there, and there was no self-rising flour. My grandmother called Mr. Cormier, Cormier from behind that butcher market, 
cutting the meat. She said, well, why we don't have no Seth Rollins flour when I'm trying to make bread for your wife? <laughs> if I'm making bread for your wife and I sent my son to come get the stuff, the stuff you need to have what we need. He said, oh, my Ruby, we got to, it's in the warehouse. All you have to do is go in the warehouse, my Ruby. He called the boy. He said, um, man, come here. Go get my Ruby some Seth Rising flour. Oh, I don't think we have. He said, yeah, I know we got some. He said, this whole town brick braid and this whole town is cookers. There's nothing but cooks here. We got to keep Seth Rising. Way back, there's a whole pallet full <laughs> of Seth Rising flour, wow. right? So why? Now we get back home and my grandma told that lady, don't you ever tell him what's not in here if you didn't go looking for it. Okay. So a lot of times, y'all, uh, the process make us go look for stuff that's on the inside of yeah. us that is needed. Watch this. And, you ready? Mm -hmm. You ready? Mm -hmm. And that's not needed. Okay. okay. So the process help us to do a research. Mm -hmm. That's a good word. Yes. The process help us to research mm -hmm and go back and start looking for stuff that we uh, need and stuff that we don't need, right? right? And so what we happens is, so that thing that's got, uh, that I want y'all to learn, we're gonna all learn, cause we're gonna get up out of this rut one way or the other, right? And we're gonna all learn this thing and, and we are gonna prepare for the Zoom for all of the teachers that talk to us about this 1099A um, ordeal, right? It's because it's a process though. Mm -hmm. You understand? Mm -hmm. It's a process. You got to learn it. Mm -hmm. You got to know what it is. Yes. And then you, the steps to it. Because mm -hmm. see, everything about process is steps. Mm -hmm. you, you want something so bad, but then when you get it, you, you're not qualified. Mm -hmm. and, and the qualification is not that you, you're not really qualified. You just didn't fulfill the process. Mm -hmm. And sometimes we substitute the wrong thing. There you go. We do substitute the wrong thing. That's good, mother. We substitute sometimes the wrong thing. Mm -hmm. Right? Right, and when we substitute the wrong thing, what happens? The, the, the outcome is not the same. The outcome is not the same. It's like mama, mama, mama wanted that bread. Yeah. Fl uh, yeast, baking powder, and soda gives you different results. G give us a different result. The taste is different. So, but so, but watch this now. But we needed that self rising flour. Right. Mm -hmm. Right. The 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 so self rising flour, and the the, the uh, baking soda. And all the other stuff that they she put in her bread or whatever she did, like the milk and the butters and whatever else she did. Because I'm trying to tell you something. We had big old cans of butter sitting up in the refrigerator. And when she said, don't y'all fool with this butter. This for my bread. And I got to make them bread for them people. You see? And my grandma will make that bread. And I'm telling y'all, that bread would be, them biscuits would be so big and the bread would be so long. And sometimes mama will cut them bread open and she'll turn it inside out and get some butter and put inside the, uh, in, in, in the, in the, Pay, put the butter in there, then put some white sugar in there because we ran out of brown sugar. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah, I'm gonna help y'all with something. I'm gonna help y'all with something that y'all probably don't know, know nothing about. I know y'all little old, y'all older than me, but y'all might not know this. That was time grandmama would put cinnamon, uh, uh, cinnamon or nutmeg, nut, nutmeg, nutmeg mm -hmm. in the butter and the sugar to make it look like it was brown sugar yep. mm -hmm. and would fool us. And one time she got us by putting peanut butter. Mm -hmm. I said, Grandmama, what is you taking out that job? She said, boy, shut that door. Them children want some uh, brown sugar bread. So I'm having no more brown sugar. I got sugar and butter. I'm going to put this peanut butter in there. By the time I get through whipping it all up, you it's going to. And do you know that the family didn't want the cinnamon bread no more? <laughs> they wanted the, 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 the new bread. Uh, Grandma, she would never tell them. So finally, one day I told them, I said, child, it ain't nothing but butter. That can't that peanut butter. You know that canned peanut butter yes. with the syrup on the top of it? <laughs> Grandma will pour that syrup in that pan and she'll scrape that peanut butter, put all that sugar, mix it all over that butter and that oil that was already yep. in there. And, and, and yeah, and it would turn, mm -hmm. but it was so sweet. And she would take it and she would just smear it on top of the bread. They just said that new bread, Grandma. See, because why? She changed her process. Right. She changed how she made the bread. Mm -hmm. Now, that's the only reason why she changed because of something you just said. What you, you, would you say? Substitute. Substitute, right? Because we had ran out of brown But she made sugar. a better substitution. Right. That's, that's the, the point I'm getting ready to go to. She made, she we ran out of brown sugar mm -hmm. and we ran out of nutmeg and, and cinnamon. cinnamon. Mm -hmm. So she had to make it out of the peanut butter. Mm -hmm. Now I don't know why grandma was talking about putting that peanut butter in there because that peanut butter is thick. Yeah. But by the time she put that butter and that oil from that peanut butter came that's and put that butter. sugar in there, it had thinned out, mm -hmm. and when she smeared that on top of that bread and it kind of dried up, 
it was just as tasteful mm -hmm. as it can be. Because she had imagination. That's right. Mm -hmm. and, 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 and just not imagination, but she had a creative that, imagination. Right. Yes. And, and that's, why, uh, that's why it's very necessary for us to have mothers in our lives. Yes. As well as fathers. Mm -hmm. Because mothers know how to improvise. Imp improvise. improvise mm -hmm. Right? And make things mm -hmm. work. And stuff that a father will say, well, just put sugar on it and dip it in some butter. I eat it that way, it'll be, it'll be <laughs> fine. But no, uh-uh. And you know, I, I remember a time that my grandma used to eat, I think I told you that, white uh, rice and, 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 and milk. I say, uh, 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 cr not so. milk, cr what you call that? Cream cheese. Um, what is it's a little thing. It's a little container. She'll open it up and it had cheese in it. It's kind of cheese on it. Cream cheese? Cream cheese, she put, but it was kind of watery. She'll put that rice up in there, just mix it all up, and, and she just be sitting out there to eat. She said, you want some? I say, no, because I don't understand that process. I don't. Now, that was her experience. That was, that was her experience. And so every one of us have a different experience mm -hmm. in our process. Mm -hmm. But we got a one purpose. Mm -hmm. right. Now, I don't, I'm not talking about the multiple multiplicity of purposes that people may have, right. but need to know how to do decoration. So she's very purpose in that. Uh, Sister Latia was telling me at, at lunch at Sunday that she does decoration. Mm -hmm. And the first thing I said to her was get with Sister uh, Bonita and stuff. I said, she said, oh, me and Sister Bonita have talking. I said, oh, we have a lot of decoration. Well, we had a lot of decoration because somebody stole mm -hmm. the decoration. That's why your fingers going to fall off for stealing the church stuff. Right. Mm -hmm. But anyway, but we have a lot because I love to decorate. And I love to make things look elaborate. Right. But we all got different purpose. Mm -hmm. I, I do it is because I don't want to pay, take our monies to pay somebody to do that. Mm -hmm. Right? But neither does it because it's an income for her mm -hmm. in some shape. Like she do knows what that is welcome. Those welcome. Um, um, what you call it? Porch signs. The porch signs and stuff like that and sink covers. Mm -hmm. And they got the sink covers. They got the, the porch reefs. signs. Reefs, all your reefs, mm -hmm. and all of that. So your is your purpose changed from my purpose. Right. Your purpose is I will use my creativity so that I can begin to do what I can make money wow. off of and get my business out. Mm -hmm. Mother does her soups and stuff. Uh, Phyllis have another purpose in life that she can read something and, and change the punctuations in it. And don't right? let them make them uh, smooth for you. Good. Oh, good. Oh, uh, that, oh, and, and uh, what else? Her spaghetti, her swell. You know, we, we all go on our fast and we all like Phyllis soup, you know, and a uh, keep, what it is, thing? Quiche. That quiche pie, mm -hmm. you know, Murray loved that quiche pie. Murray was sitting down. Yes, Mama Bank brought this one for me. This pop, this is for you. This is for me. And and they just say, you know, she'll make them for the house or whatever. And I'm not gonna eat them that much, you know. I'm not gonna eat them that much because I'm really not fond for it. I eat it because she made it and just good. But I'm yeah, not. One piece, that's enough. Yeah, one piece of it is enough. But you give me her spaghetti without the sugar. Even with the sugar, I was still eating the sugar, but I have to add my hot sauce on it. See, my purpose changed, right? My purpose changed, right? right. She put sugar on it, so now I have to purpose hot sauce. Well, but you know, we from the south, they're yeah, from we'll California. Do we, we don't put no sugar on top of no, but we understand it does keep the acid, acid down. Flushing, when, flushing you, down. when you use Ketchup. the tomato, you, you should. Put yeah, you, that's what they say. So that, I, I guess that's what her mama taught you that way mm -hmm. to do it that way to keep it, but I don't. I don't want it sweet. And as soon as I ate one time, I was sick and she made it something. I said, ah, oh, you got sugar in there. Oh my God, I can tell you. I just dumped all kind of seasoning all on it and hot sauce and garlic pot to get rid of that sweet. But I couldn't. And she didn't put a lot in it. But I couldn't. It's just like her, 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 her briskets. Man, those briskets be good. Just like your son's french fries, mother uh, chicken salad, mother cakes um um anything that mother cook that we all in here that, yes. that cook is pretty much good right lady andrews green beans you know uh you know uh my jambalaya yeah. you know my please dirty please rice please and, please and, and and whatnot but all of it has a purpose you you watch this all of us have a uh, have that all of those things have a purpose mm -hmm. first so when 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 hannah had samuel mm -hmm. her purpose was to have a child but she had to go through a process yes. because remember she couldn't carry have a child at first mm -hmm. so she went through a major process mm -hmm. of having this child and then what happens she, after she had the child she turned the child over right. to eli right. 
after the child was weaned off of her breast, she turned the child over to Eli. Now, what's amazing, y'all ready for it? Mm -hmm. What is amazing is she didn't go through the same process for the next children. Right. Oh, y'all didn't hear me. Yes, yeah, yes, yeah, 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 you see, see, the first initial process you go through and you pass the test, mm -hmm. it will help you graduate all through every other process. Right. Ooh. I don't, I don't think y'all heard me. Yes. Uh -huh. I, I, I think. So watch this. Watch this. Watch this. Mm -hmm. We're gonna look at it. We're gonna, we, we're gonna look at it. Uh, um, uh, watch this. Watch this. Um, uh, uh, Hannah. Watch this. So that would be First Samuel one. Let's get it. First Samuel one, sister. First Samuel. The first, first Samuel one, first Samuel one and one says, now there was a certain man of Ramah. No, uh, same day, read one and one. Cause we always want to read the introduction of the chapter. Now there was a certain man of Ramathaim Zophim of Mount Ephraim and his name was Elkanah, mm -hmm. the son of Jeroham, the son of e Elihu, the son of Tohu, the son of Zup mm -hmm. and Ephronite. And he had two wives. The name of the one was Hannah. Two wives. The, one was Hannah and one was... The name of the other was Penina. Penina. And Penina had children, but Hannah had no children. Penina had children. Now, we can look at that mother court and know that's a problem right there, right? Yeah. Oh, it was. First of all, we know that was a problem because right. it was a man with two wives. Two wives. Right. <laughs> and, and now, and watch this. Here, here, here's the dangerous <laughs> stuff. Here's the dangerous stuff. Y'all ready for him? Mm -hmm. And this represent Hannah and Penina represent the church in the world today. Okay. Mm -hmm. And if we look okay. at it, y'all, the church, uh, the church is Hannah, mm -hmm. and Penina is the world. Right. The Bible said that Hannah did what? What did it say? Hannah had no children. Hannah what? had no children, right. but Penina, 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 Penina did. did. How she had children, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. So read it again. And he had two wives. The and the Bible the said that he had two wives. One was Hannah. One was Hannah. And the name of the other was Penina. And the other was and the other was Penina. Now, if we just read, uh, if watch it, there you go, mother. You know where I'm going. If we just would read a uh, 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 teach it the way it's been read, mm -hmm. uh, when we use that word, the other, mm -hmm. it could have simply means that the first one I love but couldn't produce. Mm -hmm. Right. So Ooh. I went found me another one. Mm -hmm. And the other one, was every time I touched her, exactly. she was producing. Mm -hmm. So now what happens is, is the same way in the church of God. We misappropriate uh, or misdirect our process with our purpose. Mm -hmm. We destroy our purpose by not completing our process, mm -hmm. or we destroy our process because we want to get to the purpose so bad. But watch this. This man Elkanah had a wife by the name of Hannah. Right. And the Bible said he had another one mm -hmm. by the name of Peniah. Mm -hmm. Peniah was, was the one that was producing children and Hannah wasn't. Mm -hmm. Now, if we will look at the story from another perspective, I want to give me the perspective as I possibly can today. If you can look at another perspective, maybe Peniah was given, was having all the babies because she had no purpose. Ooh. To fulfill Elkanah's future. Mm -hmm. She was having them. And that's why some folks get offended with me. When I say. Especially y'all ladies. Y'all get offended with me. When I say. Uh, uh, you know what God gave me. To Not all children. Not all children. It, it, first and first of all. Peter said. Peter said. First Peter. I think it was 1 and 18. Uh, Peter said. It says. God said. I've given you all things pertaining life. And God. godliness. Mm -hmm. First thing he said was life, life, right? So if we'll give it from the perspective in which we read, right? Mm -hmm. I've given you all things pertaining life. Let's stop. Everything concerning your life, God has already given it to you in your bodies mm -hmm. yep. to produce right. it. So artificial assimilation that we, we produce it, I believe it's satanic and it's demonic. Mm -hmm. It's my, okay, watch this Facebook Live. It's my perception. Or perspective and you have a right and i have a right to have it yes i don't feel that you ought to go to a sperm bank because you don't want to go through the process and mess up the purpose by having someone's sperm 
all the fish are simulated inside of you and you don't know the DNA connection. Hello. That's you you, you don't know. You go. You can go on all that that you want to, honey. Sometimes we don't know what we're doing when we're dating and court and marry some of these folks. Oh, and, and on the end, Connie is that what the world did I marry? What in the yeah, 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 yeah. What the yeah. devil's biscuit wheel was? I done got my. What was the what monkey on my fence was I thinking? <laughs> what gorilla spit was I drinking when I turned around and laid it with this monkey? <laughs> you you understand what I'm saying? Yes, sir. You know y'all know I come up with all kinds of stuff. You know, but you know, I'm, I, I'm telling you. Yeah. So if we go through that and we are in relationship that we pick, mm -hmm. how much more demonic and satanic rituals we'll go through when we go to some uh, sperm bank or donor bank, yeah. right? Yeah. To go yeah. pull somebody's uh, semen that you don't know nothing about. No, it is cool. You don't know what they are. What if it's they, if they have not if they have not um, uh, um, release that semen so that semen can be the next high priest mm -hmm. or the next uh, high priestess mm -hmm. or some uh, ritual or cultic Ooh. matter. Come on. So I don't agree with, I don't believe that because here's the thing, you may not be able to have a child mm -hmm. but God will still process you as a mother to take care of those children oh that goodness. come on here yeah. that right. somebody else have and can't afford to keep them. Right? right. right? So when you look at it that way, you you and you go through the process, you don't you don't destroy your purpose because say, well, I'm gonna try it this way because my husband, my name. and you know I've had people talk to me and ask me, Pastor, what do you feel about that? About what? About this and so because my this and so. I said I'm totally against that. Mm -hmm. I'm totally against that. You're getting ready to go and find somebody at a at a semen bank to pregnant you because your husband. Does. Here's the process. Do your husband drink? Yes. Do we have high blood pressure? Yes. Do he smoke? Yes. Uh, what other issue he got? He got diabetes. Yeah. Okay. Well, then you're probably not going to have the baby from here. Because all those things plays a factor mm -hmm. right. of the man's sperm count being low. My husband did all that. <laughs> <laughs> you know, and, and that's some, and there is some that it may not. But if even in the medical sense, yeah, when you look yeah. at a medical sense, uh, certain men that has not been circumcised mm -hmm. have a less chance of making a lot of children than the man that is circumcised, mm -hmm. right? Because of certain mm -hmm. bacteria and cleanliness and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. And most, you know, most men just not clean people. You know, it's just, it's just not. We gotta be honest. I stand for the male factor, but sometimes I look back and say, oh, you messed the process this morning, call take a man. You know, you know, so it just, just don't. <laughs> so you have to get to that place um, because all of these things plays a part. Mm -hmm. So you cannot destroy your process, uh, your process by trying to rush your purpose. Mm -hmm. And you cannot, watch this, you cannot destroy your purpose because you don't want to fulfill or finish your process. Because you find yourself completing that process in another arena of your life. Mm -hmm. another, and, and, and it become contaminated, frustrated, you become mm -hmm. frustrated. Mm -hmm. Then your, your purpose become frustrated because you didn't finish over here because you got mad and you know we got this free agent wheel. I do what I want when I want. Okay, but there is a consequences that comes with doing what you want, when you want, and however way you want. So you got to walk a line upon line up and precept upon precept. And do you know if the hooks instruments that they're using on you are clean? Yes. Or you might stand the dirty man. Cause that's that's his natural state, right? But the the master instruments are not natural. And, How and many you, people you, have been infected by nasty instruments? Yes, just like a lot of time. That's why a lot of blacks in the eighties, the seventies, and eighties, they want to go to the dentist when that boy wound up getting HIV mm -hmm. from the dentist. Mm -hmm. People like, oh no, because it was a black child, right? right. That got HIV from a dentist. Mm -hmm. So black people were like, oh no, no, they're trying to kill us. We ain't going. <laughs> so we risk of having bad mouths, mm -hmm. right? Because of something happened that destroyed the process of health. Mm -hmm. Yes. You understand? And so that you can't walk with a purpose filled life being healthy. Mm -hmm. Because guess what? Your mouth is the first beginning of all diseases, infections, yes, and viruses. Is. That's right. Starting the mouth. It, it starts in your mouth. Your digestive doesn't start when it gets in your stomach. Mm -hmm. It starts in the 32 times you bite your food. Mm -hmm. That's why you got them teeth in your mouth. 32 teeth in your mouth, right? Right, I think not 32, Whoa, right? Yeah, yeah. Six, 60, 60, 60, 60, 60. <laughs> right? So, yeah, so you have to chew 32 times before you swallow. Right. But how many people pro push the process yeah, and don't and just, don't just and don't? Yeah. 
smaller. And, and just smaller. And then all of a sudden, the esophagus have to work more to push that food down, mm -hmm. right? And then when it get in the stomach, you have to now your body's creating more acid than what it normally would create to break the food down. And then now your intestines is dealing with issues. And then now your, your neurology system, your bloodstream is dealing with issues because you didn't finish something in your mouth. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You, you, you understand what I'm saying? Yes. You, you're in the same, <laughs> but we all, mother, we all guilty of that, yeah. right? Because I got some back there that's gone, right? And, 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 I'm not about the teeth. I'm not talking about the, the system messed up like that. Yes, and yes. Because I'm, I'm still having problems, you know. But see, the problem is when we was coming up, we ate to be full, so we go to bed. No one sat us down and talked with us when we was coming up. That's and true. I'm younger than y'all. Nobody taught us that. We came in and we had, we had, uh, we had, um, uh, oh, uh, what you got it? Corn. corn. No, oh, yeah. we would have corn, different type of corn. You had corn with, with, with okra in it, corn with okra and diced tomatoes in it. You put that on top of, of some white rice. You mix the rice right up. Then you put some chicken on top of that. And all we, we breaking everything, just putting everything in one thing. Just, oh, oh, oh. Cause half of us trying to get back outside. Right. Right. So we're not understanding that we got to break eat uh chew 32 times per per uh um, spoonful and nobody told you to put that water down and that you know that you we drinking and eating at the same time and that's not a good thing right so we even in health school when in health you know we're seeking health in school they was telling us but parents wasn't practicing that stuff when we got home mm -hmm. so a lot of stuff y'all we saw at we found out at school but when we got home it was something else different so what we're going to adapt adapt to we're going to adapt to at home, at home. That's and true. so it's the same way in the church. What goes crazy at home, right? Says, you mess up your process in the kingdom mm. because home is beyond the process. Don't want to be processed. You <laughs> or, or there's another process there. Mm -hmm. And a lot of times you're not get you're not able to handle both sets of process, mm -hmm. right? That's the reason why we don't take kindergarten and first grade at the same time. Mm -hmm. We take kindergarten, and 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 uh, I'm quite sure when you was coming up, mother, you and Phyllis and Benita, did y'all have Head Start? Mm -hmm. Head Start didn't start till Kennedy came in, and that was in the '60s. I was already grown. When okay, Head so you was grown. No, we had just had kindergarten. We only went half a day. You went kindergarten half a day, but but didn't go all day. You had his. I see. So me, but I went to kindergarten. I went to kindergarten. No, 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 no. no, no talking about like Head Start because like John Kennedy started. Head so John start. Kennedy, President John Kennedy, started Head Start. Right, so I had Head Start, right? I went to Head Start, right down the street from my grandmama's house. You can look on the porch and there's a Head Start. And I'll go outside to play and guess what? I'm looking directly at the porch to see who out there, who, <laughs> what car in the yard. If my mama, if my mom knows it, if my mama gonna pass by on the side or my auntie is gonna pass by so I can speak to him or I can ask him, could I come home, right? <laughs> but then when I got to school, school did what? Head Start prepared me. Right. Yeah. For, for, for kindergarten. So when I got to kindergarten, I wasn't like whooping that crying and screaming and out. And now they got to hold me back because uh, she didn't want to stop crying. Or like Jackie, you know, oh, now I catch up with Jackie. She want, me, she want me to be in the class with her. So it's like everybody was, you know, it was just, it, so, right. Everything had a dependency, but a lot of things in my life, my purpose was messed up in some areas because there was over-processing me or pushing me out of the processing mm -hmm. to be with somebody mm -hmm. that was a crybaby. Mm -hmm. So, but that's not what God wants. God wants us to finish the process. Mm -hmm. So he says that the other woman was Hannah, uh, was Penina. Mm -hmm. Now, come on, let's finish. Reading. And this man went up out of the city yearly to worship mm -hmm. and to sacrifice unto the Lord of hosts in Shiloh. Mm -hmm. And the two sons of Eli, Hophni and where, 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 where he went to worship the Lord at? Shiloh. He went worship the Lord where? Shiloh. He went and worship the Lord where? Shalom. And Shalom. So for all of you that wonder where our scriptures come from, uh, for Shalom, listen, that's one of the, the scriptures. Uh, 1 Samuel, uh, 1 Samuel 1 and 18. Uh, I mean, 1 and 1, 2 and 3, I think. 1 and 3, right? Where he go annually to worship the Lord at Shalom, which was a high mountain. Mm -hmm. Come on, let's read. And the, two of the, and the two sons of Eli, Hophni and Phinehas, the priests of the Lord were there. Mm -hmm. And when the time was that Elkanah offered, he gave to Penina his wife and to all her sons and her daughters portion. All her sons. Now you go, you go, you have to find some stuff out now. Because once you're being processed and other people are being promoted, 
Okay. What do you do when you're being processed and other people are still being promoted? Wow. Wait, 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 wait. What are we doing here? I'm still in the process. Mm -hmm. And you're getting promoted. Mm -hmm. it's a, it's something happens. But we have to put our blinders on. Right. Because, and remember, my purpose is different from yours. yours. Mm -hmm. ha uh, Hannah's pur purpose was different from Panina. Mm -hmm. You understand? Mm -hmm. So watch, watch this. You, you're going to see the purpose in a few seconds. You're going to see the purpose in a few seconds. And somebody's missing this right here. Mm -hmm. Even them that's watching me on live is missing this right here. You about to see. Come on. Number five says, but unto Hannah, mm -hmm. he gave a worthy but, question. Now, when you see, Benita, the word but, mm -hmm. isn't it not a conjunction? Yes, it is. Is it not? Remember, we talked about it some time ago. It can be a creative conjunction or a negative conjunction, mm -hmm. right? Right. Mm -hmm. So, but, now go back to the but part. But. Uh-huh. Unto Hannah. But unto Hannah. He gave a worthy portion. See, they, 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 go back. Back up to Panina's portion. Verse 3 and 4. Number 3, it says, And this man went up out of and the city. And this man, this man went up out of the city. Yearly. Yearly, without so, no stopping. Nobody stopped him. Every year, the uh, 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 Elkanah went to uh, worship the Lord. Mm -hmm. And to sacrifice. Wait, wait. Because Hannah did not understand. You may not have no children right now, but I'm worshiping God. Mm -hmm. Y'all missing this. Mm -hmm. Y'all missing this. Mm -hmm. Every, every, it watches yearly. because yearly um, Elkanah will go and worship the Lord mm -hmm. at Shiloh. Mm -hmm. And the, the, the fact of the matter, uh, Hannah, uh, your son and your children is inside Elkanah. Mm -hmm. And if you can just wait until God can get all the wrong children out of Elkanah, Mm. Y'all didn't miss that. Y'all yes. missed that. Y'all missed that. Y'all missed that. Y'all missed, yes. missed, missed that. Because here's the commentary and the theological per perception concerning uh, Panina that after she had had all the children she could have, mm -hmm. one theologian says she was finished having children. Mm -hmm. Wow. Another theologian said that there's a possibly another child happened. Well, this theologian right here said wow. that God was getting rid of all of the bad seeds out of, <laughs> out of Elkanah so that when it was Hannah's time, uh -huh. Hannah would get what was only holy. Oh, y'all just missed that. Y'all missed that. Got what was holy and righteousness right. unto her. Right. See, what, here's the, 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 the wonderful thing that y'all done missed. I know, throw the Bible, throw the Bible, throw the Bible. Here's the wonderful thing that you miss is somebody exercising on another person and they look like they're being promoted over there. And it seems as if nothing is going on for you right here. But if you just hold fast, hold fast. Hold fast. Hold fast. if you just hold yeah. fast and stand strong yes. on what God told you to do, Y'all better hear what I'm saying to y'all. Y'all better hear Come me. On here. God is processing you. God is purposing you. God is causing things to, to be at a place where, where uh, all the wrong stuff is getting out of the way. Yes. See, that's the, remember I told y'all earlier? Get rid of the, the problem. Get, getting rid of the, 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 the wrong phenomenon. stuff and finding the right stuff. Yes. So while, while Hannah was being processed, mm -hmm. uh, Elkanah, was still promoting, producing babies. Mm -hmm. So he goes to worship. And finally, when he gets through worship, and the verse number three says, And this yeah. man went up out of his city yearly to worship and to sacrifice unto the Lord of hosts in Shiloh. And the two sons of Eli, Hophni and Phinehas, the priests of the Lord, were there. Mm -hmm. And when the time was that Elkanah offered, he gave to Penina his wife mm -hmm. and to all her sons and her daughters portion. Mm -hmm. Number five, but unto Hannah, he gave a worthy portion. See, that, that, there you go. That, that's the part, Bonita. I, I, I need y'all to grab a hold to something. Yes. I, I want y'all to grab a hold of something, Mother. He just, that just, just, that just, just He gave Penina a portion. Uh -huh, yes. But he gave, but he, he, gave, gave uh, he gave, I mean, Penina a portion. Right. right. But he gave Elkanah, I mean, uh, Hannah, Hannah a, a worthy portion. portion. Now, look what my Bible says. Whenever Elkanah offered sacrifice, he gave some of the meat to Penina mm -hmm. and some to each of her sons and daughters. Mm -hmm. I got a problem with that because we're not reading the text. Read verse four again. 
And when the time was that Elkanah offered, and when the time when Elkanah started offering, he gave to Penina his wife. He gave to Penina his wife, and to all her sons and daughters, and all her sons, her sons and daughters, and daughters, her sons, her sons. Wait, 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 wait! I got a problem with Elkanah. Because why are you not acknowledging that they're you? Your children. Okay. All, all right. Thank you, Overseer. God bless you, Christian. Overseer Christian. Watch this. Something else. So look what he says. He says, uh, her sons and daughters, but he gave Hannah even more mm -hmm. because he, he loved, loved Hannah uh -huh. very much, even though the Lord had kept her mm -hmm. from having children of her own. Mm. Oh, Mm -hmm. Even Richard. if he gave them equal portions, Penina's portion would be smaller because she had divided between. There you go. Kids. Thank you for helping me teach Bible class, Mother. It's so true because when she, when the portion that he gives to her, it was also includes the children. Right. But with Hannah, because you have none at this season. Oh. What I give you is all yours. Mm -hmm. Woo! Oh my God. Oh, and, and watch this. And, 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 and you get the worthy portion because I'm giving it to you because according to my Bible, he said, I give it to you because I love you. Not now. The other, he never said in my Bible, <laughs> did he say it in your King James Bible? He said he loved Hannah. He, no, I said Panana. Oh no. Did he say in Panana no, he loved that? Never girl. said that. No. See, I don't want nobody that ain't gonna love me. No. I'm sick of folks being around me and you can't love me. Mm -hmm. I need you to love me like I love you. Right. But but I, I believe though, uh, uh, Elkanah did love Panana. Yeah. But I believe because he was a man of worship, mm -hmm. he understood as a man mm -hmm. that you know that culture mm -hmm. time. Panana is having children. Mm -hmm. The time mm -hmm. she's not. So she doesn't have any kids. So let me let me let me show more concern to her, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Something we probably all would have done. Yeah. But in that coach of time, he showed her. Look what he says. Look what he says. He says, uh, uh, but to Hannah gave more. He loved Hannah very much, even though the Lord kept her from having children of her own. Look what verse six says. But then like Penina liked to make Hannah feel miserable mm -hmm. about not having any children. Mm -hmm. Now, see, but once again, remember what I said earlier in our conversation. Hannah and Penina is like the church and, and the world. Mm -hmm. Penina got everything every time you turn around. She pushing babies out. She got it. And don't the world make us feel as if we're not? Mm -hmm. and, and guess what? Some of the people that are Christians are now taking the mindset of the world yes. to make us feel that we're not what we are because we don't have what we, what the world has. Mm -hmm. Or, you know, I'm planning for my future for my children. I mean, nothing is wrong with planning a future for your children and your wife and your husband and, and whatnot. But if you drop dead today, mm -hmm. who's going to finish what you plan? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And can they understand what you plan? Thank you. Mm -hmm. and, and, but, but, but watch this. How many times have mothers and fathers of old, our grandparents, have have died and left us land mm -hmm. and left us stuff. And we sold it. And we sold it, fought over it, went to jail, messed it over it, and somebody else got it. Mm -hmm. For lesser than what our grandparents and paid, for. paid for. You understand? So at the end of the day, Jesus said, he said, what profit a man to gain the, the world and then lose his soul? And, and you oftentimes would say, well, why would Jesus say that? Why would the scripture would say that? It's because the ability to gain the world means I got to be processed to be able to handle what they're offering me mm -hmm. so that I can gain it. Mm -hmm. What on the Christian side, all I got to do is say, yes, Lord, right. yes. pray, seek him and worship him. Mm -hmm. And he would give unto me my bosom. Right. I'd rather do it the God's way. Yeah than to do it the world way. He said, give and it shall be given back to you. Press down, shake it together and run it over. Well, I cause men to give unto your bosom. If you obey me, scripture said, he said, I'll make you eat the good. Y'all ain't gonna talk to me just in, in this room. He said, I'll make you eat the good of the land. If you humble yourself before the mighty hands of God in due season, you give you the fact. So we don't wait on the due season. That's it. We don't wait on the due season. 
And not only because why, we want to get to the purpose so bad that we would destroy the process. We want to be married so we marry anybody. And then you wind up married four, five, six, seven, eight times. We see, you know, my auntie, she done been married. I'm going to tell you, my auntie. Okay. I think she's been, she been married five times. Good and one day I told her, I said, girl, be young. How many times you gonna be married? She said, I'm gonna keep on time finding the right one. Well, girl, I don't think the right one gonna ever come. I think you the all of them, all of them could have been right for that last one, that last one. I, I don't believe that last one was right. I I, I don't believe <laughs> my poor uncle, he dead and gone. He, I, you, you know, that's the only one she outlived, you know. Well, yeah, the other two, the other, the other three, Ooh. four, eight to the last one. That one gone. He, he poor thing, he gone. He gone. He was gone when she married him. You know, <laughs> I'm telling you, he gone. But my my purpose of this conversation is how many times did she do that? It's because she never wanted the ability just to be a strong woman like my grandmother was mm -hmm. or my other aunts was that was willing to work, willing to go out there and do what needs to be done, that I didn't need a man. My aunt said, no, 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 honey, I'm, I'm not going to get me a man. I'm going to get me a man. And every man had to have, you have to have money, you have to have a job, you have to have this, you have to be able to protect her because she ran her mouth so much. So it was, it was, just, it was never about a process of marriage. It was just a purpose mm -hmm. for me. Mm -hmm. right. It had nothing to do wow. with marriage. Mm -hmm. It's what I wanted. And I watched today that that aunt today is not the aunt that we knew. When people ask me, they say, what? I said, honey, if you do the dirt, it's going to come back up. You know it, right? Okay. <laughs> let's please let's not act like we all crazy here. Like we don't know the history of this Margaret Miller. Honey, this Margaret Miller was a hot fucking mess. <laughs> You know what I'm saying? So at the end of the day, um, it was it, she always destroyed her process. Mm -hmm. I, I love my aunt because my aunt got me into Christendom and she supported me into Christendom and she pushed me into Christendom. And she did listen to a lot of things that I told her. But I guess after I moved to California, a lot of, um, no one was there that she respected enough to, to challenge her. Mm -hmm. Because I watched my auntie walk with me ministry when I was in Louisiana, faithful and dutiful. And she did it. But then when I moved away, I, I watched some of my family members kind of gotten weary in the faith, right? Because a lot of them all was going through the process, but they they stopped the process when I left. Mm -hmm. Because they had nobody to be accountable to. Mm -hmm. You understand? Mm -hmm. And when you don't have anybody to be accountable to, you always will frustrate your process mm -hmm. or kill your purpose, right? Because accountability will always make you say, no, 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 you got something to do. Get that together. Come on out that wickedness of your ways. You got something to do, right? But I, I want to get to, um, let, let's, let's, let's get to read. Number six says, and her adversary also provoked her sore mm -hmm. for to make her fret because the Lord has shut up her womb. And as he did so year by year, when she went up to the house of the Lord, so she provoked her, therefore she wept and did not eat. Number eight, then said Elkanah, her husband to her, Hand why her are you crying? Why won't you eat? Why do you feel so bad? Don't I mean more to you than 10 sons? Mm. Uh, uh, Elkanah said, what is your problem, woman? <laughs> I know this girl got all this over here, but she don't have me. Don't <laughs> miss that. Ah! Wow. She said, he says, am I not? Every conversation that, that Elkanah had towards Hannah was to prove to her you got my heart. Right. Right. You are the apple of my eye. Right. I'm just living this culturalistic lifestyle because at that time it was okay mm -hmm. for them to do that. You know, and then Jesus came around. He said, hold up, let's fix this problem here. Mm -hmm. <laughs> let's fix this. Paul turned around and he fixed it too after Jesus fixed it. Mm -hmm. Paul said, listen, listen here. Listen, if you can't contain yourself like mm -hmm. I am, Man. get married. Mm -hmm. Paul told, told Timothy, when Timothy said, well, what is the office of a bishop and nothing the pastors and all this stuff? And he, he said, um, um, if a man does not, this is Paul talking. This was not Jesus or God. Paul was talking. Paul said, if a man desires the office, you got to be a husband of one wife. One. Because the problem of it is, the problem of it is, and let's, let's make a clear statement here, one wife at a time. Mm hmm that's what Paul was talking about. Mm -hmm. Paul wasn't talking about you got married one time, you divorced, got married again, you divorced. Because these traditional men today, 
culturalistic men. Oh, you've been married five times. You can't be a bishop. Shut up. How many times you've been married? Because how many times you slept with somebody and you got your wife at home, but you're sleeping with somebody on the evangelistic road? How many times you've been married? About 2,500 times, 1,000 times. That's so right. you shut up. That's why I'm telling the man that's faithful. And, and, and instead of us having had three divorces and I'm on my fourth marriage, but God's called me to be a bishop. So you've been married one time, but you slept with a whole bunch of people. And guess what? Sex is a part of what? Marriage. Marriage. Because what it's called consummating. Mm -hmm. Am I right? Yes. That's not what they did back in the in the 80s, mm -hmm. the 90s and the 80s and the 70s. Before you get divorced, they will ask you, did and you consummate? The marriage. Because um sex seals the, right. the, the, the that's right. right. Even right. culturalistically. So every man and every woman that's laying up sleeping with a man or a woman. Marriage. You marry you because you intertwine your soul and right. spirit yes. to these people. Right. It's the one sin committed in the body. That, that, there you go, mother. The one's covenant sin. Yes. Let's yes. make sure we identify that. Yes. That yes. covenant sin. Yes. Because yes. when you lay up with a person you and you, you make covenant. Yes, you do. You you intertwine your spirit and your oh. soul with that person. Mm -hmm. That's that's consummated. So you can't talk about the man that got three, di <laughs> three wives, three uh, divorces, and how many, you got one wife, but how many folks you cheated on your wife? Mm -hmm. All Ooh. right. See, we got to make some, we got to get some clarity Ooh. in this, right? Mm -hmm. So when Paul was talking to us, he fixed himself. He said, man, need to be married to one woman, one woman mm -hmm. at a time. So people are like, well, you know, uh, I don't live under the Paul. Right. Well, you're not a Christian. And we're Christians. Christians, we live under, under the New Testament laws. That's what we do. Now, you want to be a Muslim, you don't want to eat meat, you don't want to eat pigs, you don't want to eat all this. So somebody asked me yesterday, they don't eat pork because pork is this and pork is that and pork is this. I said, well, what you going to do with all this beef? This beef gives you gout. You know, the red meat gives you gout. I know. <laughs> right? Uh, the red meat causes you all kind of malfunction in your bodies. So it's all right for you to eat the, the, the cow. Well, there's ain't nothing all right for you to eat the pig. Oh, well, they don't have sweat glands. Well, maybe God made them that way. Hell, I mean, I don't know. I mean, <laughs> I don't swear. You know, so that, does that make me demonic? Because I don't swear. Now, y'all been around me for a long time. When have you really known me if, uh, unless we in a hot building? And that's very, very, very rare. Very rare. Mm -hmm. I don't swear. You get Murray and Bishop and, and Mike and Ryan and whoever else, they just stand up and they get sweating. You know, I don't, I don't sweat like that. Right. I, I literally, even though I put deodorant because I take a bath every day, every night I take a bath and get up in the morning, I'm going to take a wash off and I'm putting deodorant on, but don't I, I, I don't really need it because I don't, don't sweat. sweat. Like I go in the gym and people be smelling. I'm like, okay, I, all right, yeah, go. Go. <laughs> and I don't work. I don't got, I would get oily, you know, right. you, you know, like oil as a way, as, I guess I'm assuming it will go into sweat if I continue, mm -hmm. but my body tip to go up, I don't do that. You know, I can feel the heat, right. but I don't sweat. Mm -hmm. Right? So um, so when I said that to them, I said, so what are we going to do with all the pigs and the cows? God made them for us. So if God made them for us, they're going to keep making, 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 and they're going to be populated with pigs and cows. Then they're all going to die, and then we're going to have bugs and, oh, and maggots and everything all over the earth. I said, what are we going to do with them? Well, uh, I never thought about it. I said, well, you go back to your Muslim temple, I need you to ask them and please Instagram me and, and and tell the me. The pig ain't dumb. That's <laughs> why he's making you sick. You, you ain't cooked him long. Right. Time. So, you know, so when I told him that he, he didn't understand, <laughs> I said, just, just think about it. If every pig keep producing, mm -hmm. yep. if every cow keep producing, mm -hmm. we'll be overpopulated with these animals. They're going to die because there's no pastures for them. Mm -hmm. What's the purpose? Now, I do not understand that those animals, like a farm raised animals, not like, you know, not, you know, like when it was coming up in, in the South, we had our own cows and stuff that they ate the grass. Right. You know, they're not those that are all in cow forms where they're sticking um, steroids, steroids and hormones into that. You know, there are some people that don't eat pig, I mean, you know, meat at all. And, you know, that's times I stopped eating meat. And stuff. I don't eat meat. I eat a lot of vegetables, you know, broccoli and, and cauliflower and zucchinis and stuff like that. I, it's time that I'm, I've been, especially since I got into the 5 O Club, you know, I've really been eating uh, a lot of, you know, vegetables and stuff like that. Why? Because I want a healthy system. Yes. Right? So I kind of pulled back. It's like um, uh, today I did 
um, I went to Popeye's and did did a little, you know them little wings, mm -hmm. little wings. Mm -hmm. I got one wing, tasted. Do you know I felt like regurgitating? Because mm -hmm. I hadn't had fried food in a good while. Mm -hmm. I was like, I just felt like regurg regurgitating. Now I had fried shrimp when we went to the thing the other day, but it didn't do me nothing. But I, in, I, in my mind, I guess it's because no, I, not. yeah, in my mind, I know that it's this Popeye's chicken, it's this chicken in this grease mm -hmm. that just popping. Mm -hmm. And I guess once I smelt it, mm -hmm. I, I don't know. So I, I wasted my, what, $6 today. Mm -hmm. Because I gave it to her, but I didn't waste it because I wound up giving it to a homeless man, you know. And I said, Well, I didn't drink out this drink. If you want, you can have it. And he's like, well, Brother, I care if you drink out of it or not. I still want it. <laughs> you, you, you understand? And it's, it's, it's amazing to me that the purpose of this young man was he needed food. Right. He didn't care in the daytime we live in mm -hmm. what bacteria I could have passed on to him that could kill him. Mm -hmm. Right now, the purpose is I need my starving pain to go away. Mm -hmm. Do you get what I just said to y'all? Mm -hmm. Did you get what I just said to y'all? Mm -hmm. So I don't mind. I watched this man walk down the street, go from trash can to trash can. Mm -hmm. And when I felt like the regurgitating, I said, I wait the block, came back around, he was at the gas station. I said, hey, bro, you want that? I had some other stuff in the car. I said, hey, you want this? And he was like, man, give me everything you got. And then he said, oh, you got some water? I had my little zip waters in it, big bottles like this. And he said, um, can I have two bottles of water? He said, man, I can take a bath with this. Well, you, you miss that. You miss that. Wow. You mean, why are we arguing about we shouldn't eat meat? Why are we arguing about when we shouldn't eat pork? Why are we arguing about that we should not eat that kind of fish or this shrimp or whatever? All that? There's somebody starving and dying that say, can I just have that because I can use this? for? Because one of the bottles was already open. Mm -hmm. One of the bottles was open. And um, when it was open and stuff, I said to him, I said, uh, well, bro, this bottle is already open. I drink that. He said, bro, I told you before, I don't care. He said, and I can use it to take a bath. Mm. He was oh, and he was already dirty, mm. you know, but he was going to use half of this bottle of water to probably, I don't know what he was going to take a bath with. I mean, I, I mean, I don't right. know how he would use it right. for that. But however way he was going to appease his mind, his right. mental, right. he was going to do it. And while we were arguing, I posted something there on my Facebook that y'all see about uh, how they're getting ready, how uh, Twitter was talking about the day somebody was passing it around and in a in, in group chat, how they're getting ready to shift and turn, turn economic systems around mm -hmm. and all of this. And we're arguing about should we wear garments or should we not wear garments? Well, Why do we need to wear these garments? When there's a whole nother warfare that we need to be worried about. Yes, we well. worry about it, argue about who should be under, who can be same sex married, who can be married, who can't be married. Mm -hmm. You understand what I'm saying? I, listen, when, when you stand before the righteous seat of God, God gonna get you about that. I ain't got nothing to do with that. But my the weapons of our warfare, the Bible said it's not carnal. I want to get to something about 1 Samuel, because if you get to the 18 verse, we're gonna close here. The 18 verse said something. And she said, Let thine handmaid find grace in thy sight. Mm -hmm. So the woman went her way and did eat, and her countenance was no more sad. So look what look, look, look what it says. First of all, verse 16, 15 says, go to 15, 15. And Hannah answered and said, no, my Lord. Because 14, he thought Hannah was drunk. Yeah. Right. She said, no, 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 no. 14 says, 14 says. Uh, uh, and Eli said unto her, how long wilt thou be drunken? Put away thy wine from thee. And Hannah answered and said, no, my Lord. I am a woman of a sorrowful spirit. Mm -hmm. I have drunk neither wine nor strong drink. But have poured out my soul before the Lord. Well, look, look, in other words, what she was saying, I'm not like the daughters of Belial. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. Hannah said, No, no, no. I'm a woman of sorrow. I'm a woman of you. I'm crying out to God. Don't, don't, don't judge me like these women of Belial. Mm -hmm. Belial's daughters. No, no, no. I ain't drunk as ye suppose. I'm seeking and crying out to God. Verse 16 says, What? Count not thine handmaid for a daughter of B. Uh -huh. Eli. Look, he said, look what my verse, look, hold up, fellas. Look what my verse said. Uh, sir, please do not think I'm no good. Had an answer. Mm -hmm. I'm not drunk and I have not been drinking, but I do feel miserable and terribly upset. I've been praying all this time. Tell the Lord about my problems. Mm -hmm. Verse 17, Eli replied, Go home. Everything will be fine. The God of Israel will answer your prayer. Sir, Thank you for being so kind to me, Hannah said. Then she left, and after eating something, eating something, she felt much better. Mm -hmm. But Hannah did not stop 
her process mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. because oh yeah her process because El cannot say oh you are I'm better than to you than ten sons mm -hmm. uh, I love you more than I love her mm -hmm. no none of that stopped her process mm -hmm. because see it's something about Hannah that Hannah said when I do get pregnant this firstborn mm -hmm. is gonna be your real born. Oh, y'all missed that. Mm -hmm. Y'all missed that. So, 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 wait a minute. Wait a minute, mother. Wait a minute, Son. Panina. Wait a minute. This woman had sons and daughters, mm -hmm. Panina. But, but Hannah says unto to Eklona, Eklona, but when I have a child, mm -hmm. when I have this child, this will be your first mm -hmm. child. No one really talk about Panina's children. But nobody. We barely know their name. We barely know their name. And some people give names out and stuff and say, oh, this could be because of, of, of uh, ge geographically and, and uh, chronological and all this other stuff. I say, oh, is, are you sure this is her son or her daughter? You know, no one really talked. Because, see, w one thing about the world, when the world gets through making us feel miserable, we'll forget who they are. Mm, come, come on, because you're no longer important. The moment we as the church get in our purpose, the world is no longer important anymore. So it will never matter to us. You know, when Sam Cook died, not Sam Cook died, one of the sharp men used to tip tap, tap toe, you know, Sammy, 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 Davis, Sammy David Jr. Jr. Guess what? Man, who loves Sammy David Jr.? Me, all of us coming up in my generation, we all wore tap shoes for Christmas. And guess what? We couldn't afford tap shoes for Christmas. Bottle guess what we top. did, mother? We did one. There you go. We got the Coke bottles and popped the Coke bottles out and glued them under our shoes. And then if we had some old Sunday shoes that we didn't wear no more, we would take them and glue them, watch this, into the shoe, right? Or we'll put, uh, we'll put it where we take the, 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 the tops, and put a, a piece of wood on top of it and beat it with a hammer so it can impress itself into the wood. Mm -hmm. And then we'll glue it all around it. And we'll put it on the, on the side of our, on our shoe. And then we'll cut around and make it fit our shoe. And we'll be all on the concrete. Just tap dance. Who loved it to tap dance like me? That's why I tap dance every Sunday I can get. Every time. <laughs> I love to tap dance. But watch this. When uh, Sammy Davis Jr. died, and he told us he was owing all his money and he sold all his pride possessions to pay his financial IRS debt. Guess what? We better remember who Sammy David Jr. is. Mm -hmm. Who was the last time somebody talked about a Sammy David Jr.? Did just now. I just did right now. <laughs> but when was the last time before I did? With her smart tail. <laughs> that, that you, they don't talk about. No, you don't. Since Aretha Franklin died. When was the last time oh, and somebody yeah. talked about her? Well, she was in debt. Yeah, she was uh, in debt. Mm -hmm. And when she closed her eyes, she was only, her net worth was $20 million. And been singing all these years. This is the queen of soul. The queen of soul. Are you hearing me? All of these people in the secular world, they leave here with embarrassment and shame. Mm -hmm. The same way some pastors have left and some men and women of God have left. And But our embarrassment and shame is because, guess what, we did what Paul said, I'd rather suffer the affliction with the righteous yeah. Yeah. than yeah. the pleasure of sin, and which is only but for a moment. Come on. So it's nothing. I, I don't I don't I don't I don't downplay when a when a preacher or a pastor dies and, and they doesn't have left over what they what the world say they should have or whatever. Because you know why? You know why? The, the, we're we're sojourners. This, this this world ain't our home. No, that's right. Come on, we're just passing on through. We are living to live again. Right. To live in Christ. the world, that's right. To, to live as Christ is gain. And to to live, live as Christ, Christ, but to die, but to die again. is to gain. We're living in a dying world, but we're going to a living. We're in a dying world, going to a living world. See, I like that, mother. We living in a dying world to live in a living world, mm -hmm. right? Because what did, what John said? He said, "Look, I looked up and behold, and I saw no, a number no, no that no man can number." Uh, he said, "I looked up and saw a new heaven and a new earth." Yes. Come on, but then I saw a holy Jerusalem coming down. Yes. Are, are y'all hearing me? Yes, sir. Jesus said in 14, St. John 14, I'm going to go and prepare a place for us. That where I am, you may be also. Are y'all hearing me? Why are we setting up our treasures on this earthen vessel? Huh? In this world. 
Why is we putting our treasures on this that the, the, the thief and the moth can come and eat it up and it corrupt it? And the Bible says too that this money is going to make us cry. Yeah, listen. listen. Look at these, some of these rich folks crying right now. They're, they're people, millionaires, soon as they lose crying. their investment, they're jumping out of buildings. Mm -hmm. They commit suicide. We'll get all the monies in the world. Lose it. Won't be happy. We'll lose it. And guess what? We still got to go get some peanut butter out of king <laughs> and keep on surviving. Mm -hmm. And say, so I got one more luck. Let me go try my luck one more time. Where others will kill themselves. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Because the Bible said, wear this world as a loose garment. We got to wear this world that is so right as a loose garment. Loose garment. So therefore, don't destroy your process mm -hmm. so that you can reach and fulfill your purpose. Mm -hmm. And then, don't kill your purpose or suffocate your purpose because mm -hmm. you didn't complete your process. Because watch this, you'll get into the purpose mm -hmm. without, like Mother says, substituting things to make it fit. Mm -hmm. So then you get to the process and realize, oh my God, this doesn't work. Don't then work. what, you know, Phyllis' favorite scripture is a false balance yeah, is, abomination. is an abomination yeah. unto the Lord. Are right. oh, y'all hearing me? Mm -hmm. So when there is a false balance, mm -hmm. huh? Well, that's false balance simply mean what? I give it to you a, a negrology term. False balance simply mean I make it look good to y'all. Right. I make it look like we got it all together. Mm -hmm. to, like grandma them say, follow them home. Yeah. 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 Like the Try to live, problem. be like them Joneses. Yeah. Follow them home. Mm -hmm. And you'll find that they ain't got a pot to pee in and a window to throw it out of. Boots had turned up, they didn't know what to do. I'm trying to tell you, let me tell you something. My grandmama told me one day, she said, baby. She said, you, you drink out of jars, them old mason jars, and this house has got too many grandchildren to have glasses and stuff. So y'all drinking out of these mason jars that we, you know, and we loved our mason jars. Yeah. We, had, we ain't had no problem with our mason jars. Yes. Yeah. We had them yeah. mason jars, and everybody, some of us, we, we would chip them up to let them know, this is my jar. <laughs> we'll go to bed with our jar under our covers. <laughs> and if so that was our mason jar. Right? My grandmama say, but you'll find not, baby. You go to some of these folks out, they drinking out of styrofoam cups. They got the big old hats on their heads and they living all of that. When you open up their refrigerator, they got them little black spots going all the way around the refrigerator. Either that's mold or roach residue. Yeah. And I went and found these certain Jones home because I wanted to see if my grandmama was right. And <laughs> they got, yeah, she had a Lincoln Continental signature, the square top one back in the day. And it was it was nice, nice. It was silver and gold. Uh, no, it was no, it was white with silver with the chrome and the burgundy interior, the sunroof. Oh, I'm gonna find. I got the chrome with them. I said, "Go with them home." And I see. And I get to that house. I open up that door. That door was so musty in that house. All that beautiful clothes that they wore at church. Them big beautiful hats. That nice car. And when we went to go and eat at the restaurant, they all had nice money. But when you found them home. The, the 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 house they look at at the pond and my grandmama said well you know me your granddad we fuss all day long you know I go off with that bullhog memorizer that bullhog memorizer go off with me but I bet you when you go down you gonna find out some hands being thrown mm -hmm. and coming to find out hands was being thrown children was all disrespectful so it was a false balance mm -hmm. when it got to church everything looked so nice everything was together until one of our cousins married one of their children. Oh. And we coming to find out that that ain't really your daddy. Mm. Oh, we come to find out, oh, your daddy was supposed to kill your mama. Wow. Right? And so you, you none of y'all are that woman's children. Y'all just call her mama because when she when she came, something happened to y'all real mama. And we don't know what took place because don't nobody know back in the day if there was a hush hush. Right. So we think of Margaret Miller, but that's all her children coming to find out. Because say to grandmama, I said, you know what? She said, baby, I could have told you that. None of them children for Margaret. You thought it was for Margaret. None of that. And once again, a false balance. They they sold me an image. They sold me, you know, they, yep. they, 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 they lose it. <laughs> they oh my God, everything was together. Coming to find out that wouldn't have been Margaret Miller real children. She never had no children at all. Mm. My God. But she raised those children that daddy made them children call her mama. Mm. But the street story was he had killed that woman. Mm. We don't know. He didn't go now. We ain't gonna know. You know, dead man can't tell the truth. Another one gonna lie. So we, you know, my auntie told me they about the club. She was at the club. She said, "I want you to get that man up out of here." 
She said, he's dying here. I'm going to lose my liquor license. <laughs> she said, no, get that man out of here. He out there fighting to roll back up in this good old club. She said, them, they done been turning around here. That man died up in here. He been done and took my liquor license. And my grandma, my, my, uh, my uh, uncle said, you ain't going to lose your, you more concerned about that liquor license than this bleak man. She said, listen, get him out of here. I yeah. want him out of here because a dead man can't tell the truth and the other one gonna lie. I said, Nanny, you sure tell the truth about that? <laughs> so we'll never know the real story, right. but the false balance, right? Mm -hmm. So when Phyllis talks about that, we talked about the false balances and abominations because we make things look like mm -hmm. and it's really not. Mm -hmm. And when when anytime it's a false balance, it's not real or authentic, what happens is then people will start believing authenticity, authenticity of this balance when it's not there mm -hmm. so right. now people are living through this lie mm -hmm. and it's very dangerous mm -hmm. and it can hinder your process mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so don't don't kill your process finish it complete it don't abort the process don't okay. abort it finish it complete it because it's mandatory every mm -hmm. process in your lives in our lives are mandatory yes they mm -hmm. are there you said something that, that, that I just can't, I, I, I just can't speak. It's just ringing in my ear. It's just because it was so profound. You was we were, we were talking. You were talking about the process, and you were talking about the children, and he was getting rid of the mm -hmm. the back problem children. Mm -hmm. How many times we get impatient because God is getting rid of some of the stuff that's in our in our hindering us? But mother, that's the process. But that's what I'm saying. Yeah. We get impatient. I'm, 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 I'm talking I know what about you're saying. You get impatient. Mm -hmm. uh, there are people, mm -hmm. there's circumstances that, like you, we travel down the wrong road mm -hmm. uh, in, of life. Mm -hmm. that, 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 a lot, I, I was looking at some things in my life. I said, my God, you know, if you had done this for me 10 years ago, I, Things would have been a whole lot different. It would have all been. It would have all of us. Cause yeah. I was crazy. Yeah, all of us. You know, you do. You know, some of us would never be able to be millionaires because we will walk away from God. Mm -hmm. Because you, you, you uh, uh, PMS, power, money, and and and, and sex mm -hmm. is always cause a man to fall mm -hmm. or a woman to fall. Mm -hmm. People will sell sex just to get a position, be, go on interviews to be seductive, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. And so that they can get the job. And once they get to the job, they want to they, they start being promoted with no education or experience. And here Benita come along with all the good experience, can't get the job because there's a, a seductive spirit mm -hmm. that is in operation, mm -hmm. right? So a lot of times what God was doing, and when I looked at the story of Hannah and Panina uh, with Elkland, uh, I said, I kept looking, I said, all these sons and daughters this girl got, this woman got, and Hannah didn't get not one child. So at one point, I'm looking at it on the medical side, Bonita. Well, maybe something was wrong with the lady. Or maybe she never messed around in ovulation time, right? right. Because according to science, you can only produce in those windows, mm -hmm. which is called the windows of conception, right? right? Mm -hmm. So because science says and biology says you can only get pregnant in the, the windows of conception, mm -hmm. so was he only touching her only when she was outside of those windows, mm -hmm. right? So I had to sit back and think, or maybe she wasn't ready to be a mother. But then, but no. that's probably why God shut her wound up because it wasn't the time. And you said something the other day about when God comes in, when Jesus right. intervened. So it may not have been her time and then God already knew a time that. Clearly, it couldn't have been her time. Yeah. As you, as Phyllis is saying, it could not have been her time or maybe God didn't design you right now. Right. Right. Well, uh, what, what, there's another scripture for this, like Proverbs 3 and 5. Trust in the Lord oh, with all your heart. Lean not to your own understanding, but in all of your ways. And, and you know what? So many of us, if we would just acknowledge yes. God and ask God, God, what direction do you want me to go in this? What do, don't be wise in your own mind. That's right, and, and don't be wise in your own mind. Why the wisdom of a fool will come to anoint. Do you hear me? So we, we we create these things. We create issues. We create drama. We create stuff that 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 become dogma. Mm. And we listen to stuff we don't understand. And we counsel our own thoughts. Right. Right. Or being counseled by fools. Oh uh, uh, yeah, or being counseled by fools <laughs> is exactly right. Mm -hmm. So what God wants us to do is God wants us to do is to maintain control. Of our spiritual existence in him and through his word. Right. 
The Bible says if a man decides to teach, he must be uh, to be taught. Mm -hmm. And we have a lot of people that don't want to be taught because to be taught means I have to get rid of. Uh oh, I, I got to get rid of and become accountable to what I've learned. Watch this. Isn't it funny? And we're going to close right here. Isn't it funny that the coach can overprocess work you to play basketball? Mm -hmm. The football, you mm -hmm. overexert yourself. Mm -hmm. Baseball, you overexert yourself. Check. And uh -oh. everything in sports, you will overexert yourself and miss opportunities with family so that you can practice. Oh, wow. But why is it when it gets time for the kingdom, you can it. never overexert yourself? Well, I got a life. I got this. I got that. But how many of us have exerted ourselves to play basketball, football, run track, play baseball, run soccer, get on that horse and hit that ball, what do you call that? Rocketeer. Rocket. Mm -hmm. On the horse. You know, that's that's rocket too. That's polo. Polo. But it's a, a, one of the things, Eddie's children is doing that. Oh, with that stick, they got that stick and the little net at the end with the little ball in the highlight. Uh, what they, all that stuff. They overexert themselves mm -hmm. doing it. They practice and practice and practice and practice and practice and practice. Mm -hmm. You know, those people that do the, the ice skating things and be mm -hmm. battling with hockey. Mm -hmm. You know how they put their bodies through all kinds of stuff mm -hmm. just to be the best hockey player? But then when you call and say, we got Bible class. Well, we have Bible class. And what we got tomorrow? And what we got tomorrow? And what we got tomorrow? Oh, I, the church is not about to consume all my time. But I watch people walk to the store four and five times a day to go buy some cigar wraps or wrap a blunt. Do you know you got to walk? It takes a good minute for you to walk to the store and walk back. Then go get the weed and then take your time and process the weed so that you can put it inside your, inside your, your, cigar, your cigar wrap. Then you smoke it. And then your high go away and you're back walking all over again. In your home. And yeah, so how you overexert yourself with a lot of demonic and satanic rituals. In but when it get time for God, you yeah, always yeah. have a complaint about what I can't do. But if you overexert yourself like that, to there's no, there is a payday only. Now what you do? That, that, that's really good. That's good. But it was saying, mm -hmm. she said, you have 30,000 people in competition. We just had a cheerleaders competition here. Mm -hmm. So it was 32,000 right. athletes here mm -hmm. from five years old to 20-something years old. Mm -hmm. We're up 21, 22. So you had all of these parents. Mm -hmm. You had all of these cheerleaders, mm -hmm. boys and girls on the mm -hmm. cheerleading team. Cool. Yeah. Right. <laughs> but you had, you had first place, second place, third, third place. place. That's it. And then you had the, you know, uh, they came in first place. This person came in, but then you had the, the grand champion. Yes. Of the, uh -huh. You know, whoever they call them, mm -hmm. right? Only a chosen Only team. one can get that. That's right. Only one person can get first place. Mm -hmm. Only one person can get second place and third place. Mm -hmm. So then they turn around, what they did was create other little categories. Mm -hmm. right. You got first place here, second place in that. Mm -hmm. Then you got to compete to get first place, second place, or third place yeah, in, in the next yeah, one, yeah. to the next one. Right. Then when you finally get to the grand finale, then you got the grand winner. Mm -hmm. Then you got first place, second place, and third place. Right. But you had 37,000 people fill this city up and wore us out trying to get all these people in a car. And they all believed they were going to Everybody win. They all believed they, they was going to win. They all believed they were going to win. And they spend money all year long. Oh, Wait a minute. Yes. I found oh, out okay. that this was the third competition it came to. Within oh, wow. you. No. Girl. They, they say they start on this the competition start January the second mm -hmm. and it goes all over to April. Yeah. Wow. So they be she said the woman was up, she said, Oh, this is our third competition. We get ready to go to competition next month in t in uh Oklahoma somewhere. <coughs> what? <coughs> you gonna spend more money? Oh yes, because she's trying to get to this place. You're spending the woman says she taking money out of her mark, out, out, out of her equity uh -huh. account. They do for her daughter to try to win. Mm -hmm. The highest competition in Chile. And they can't read. And, yeah. <laughs> and their education problem. Because I mean, if you're taking this money time out of school mm -hmm. for competition, 
Well, you know, they do homework on that now, you know, maybe so. But, you know, you'll get the point that I'm right, trying to make. Right. So as we close here, as we close here, overexerting ourselves can hinder our process. We, we are not Penina. We are just like Hannah. Mm -hmm. We worship and cry out to God until God does and do what he said he's going to do. Mm -hmm. Right? He and he's going to do it. Mm -hmm. Amen. So we're so grateful for each and every one of you. We thank God for y'all tonight. I hope that we said something as you see us all entertaining in here. Amen. Those of you, we're grateful for you as watching us tonight. Uh, we was pretty little lengthy because we was carrying on in time Spain. But the word is the word. And I love the word. Yes. And I love to talk about the word. Yeah. Psalms yes. 119. Psalms 119 says what? Blessed are the undefiled and the way who walk in the law of the Lord. Mm -hmm. Blessed are they that keep his testimonies and that seek him with the whole heart. Mm -hmm. They also do no iniquity. They walk in his ways. Thou hast commanded us to keep thy precepts diligently. Oh, that my ways were directed, keep thy statutes. Then shall I not be ashamed when I have respect un unto all thy commandments. That was one through six. It can go on and on. But, but I've been yeah. in Joshua three. You've been in Joshua three? Because now is the time that the Jordan banks the Jordan River is going to overflow its banks. Mm -hmm. That's when, okay, priest, you're going to step forward, put your foot in. See, a lot of people talk about when God parted the, the Red Sea, but he parted the Jordan River too. Mm -hmm. So they could, but they had, we've been in Goshen, what, <laughs> for five years now. <laughs> right, right. But, but you had to go through Goshen yeah. to get to the promised land. Right. We're going to step into the promised land, priest. Go on, put your foot in that Jordan River. So, you know, it, it's amazing what God is doing in us and through us. And so I, I want to encourage the saints of God and the people I'm of God encouraged. to always maintain God. Yes. I'm not in competition. We're not in competition with anybody. You know, someone just asked me, can you please start the live back up? Because I'm so sick of these people with these live. They're not funny like you. They don't say the real stuff that you say. And I don't know about starting up no more 12 new lives. I, I don't know. I don't know because so many people are doing it and they're doing it because uh, they want to be, you know, whatever. I'm not in competition with anybody. Uh, and I did say to the, the person I said, but sweet darling, just for you and others like you, I will pop up here and there with thoughts because God has been giving me some real good thoughts. You know, like, I, like the other day, he said, stop tripping off of what's in your past. I, I said, hold on, let me pull this card to the side of the word and text this to myself. Stop tripping off of what is in your past. You can't do nothing about that. He said, put it behind. Yeah. Press press, forget those things which are behind right. it and press towards the mark mm -hmm. of a high call, right. which is in Christ Jesus. Right. Amen. I was told Jesus. my feet was facing forward. That's it. And you never so, meant to go back. It never meant. I, I'm just waiting on Jesus to show up. Amen. So we're, ah. we're, we're grateful and we thank yeah. God. We thank God for what God is doing in us and through us. May the Lord keep us and bless us in Jesus' name. God bless you. I love each and every one of you. Catch us on the next time. Amen. 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 Oh. So you working tomorrow? Ah. Okay.